and welcome. I am Dennis Mabuka and in this video we'll be creating this really nice looking electric effects. And we've done a video on creating sort of this kind of thing before on the channel, but in the pre previous video we were using um, curves and we used curves because it enables us to create this effect where you see the electricity traveling uh, through a defined paths. But with that method, we could only create electricity that appears and disappears uh, in, a, in a fraction of a second. But in this tutorial, we want to look at how you could make more persistent um, electric effects that last longer on the screen. So we'll start by generating your mesh. And rather than hand modeling uh, the mesh, we're going to use an add-on in a very weird way. We're going to use the IVGen add-on, which comes by default with the Blender. You can just enable it in the preferences. Now this add-on was designed for creating plants, those kinds of plants that crawl and climb on surfaces. But it turns out those uh, branches and stems look very similar to the shapes that electricity would make. So we're just going to use this add-on to generate an ivy. And I'll turn off the option for growing leaves because we don't need those. And then I'll just play around with these settings, mostly the random seed and the branching probability. And I'm just trying to create a shape that isn't too complex. And once I find a shape that I like, I'll just stick to that one. And I might even go into edit mode and delete uh, some of the extra curves so that I have um, a relatively simple shape that we're going to tweak uh, a bit later. So that easily you can see how this um, add-on really saves a life here. You don't have to manually model the arcs of the electricity. And by using this add-on, it gives you a more natural look to this um, whole effect. So once you're happy with your base shape, I will then create that setup for generating those ripples that go through um, the electric arcs. So to give us a better idea of what we're making, I'll set up an emission shader and uh, enable the bloom option. It just gives us a close look, something close to the end result that we're going for. Now it would have been very ideal if the curves in Blender could take the displace modifier because that way we could create really, really nice distortions while still maintaining that ability to animate the growing and disappearing of the electric arcs. So in the previous tutorial, what I did was I tried to use the wave modifier to introduce um, the distortions in the arcs because the curves take the wave modifier. So today we'll just convert um, these curves into a mesh so that it can take the displace modifier. And then I'll add a subsurf modifier to just give a bit more geometry for the displace modifiers to work. And then I'm going to use two displace modifiers to create the distortions. So we'll use the first displace modifier to add in the high frequency details in those electric arcs. So we'll add a texture to this modifier and set it to clouds and then set it to color. And it's important that we set it to color because it's going to use the reds, greens, and blues in that texture to displace the mesh in the X, Y, and Z directions respectively. So back in the displace modifier, we'll set the direction to RGB to X, Y, and Z. And then I'll add two empties in the scene. And for the coordinates in this uh, displace modifier, we'll set it to the first empty. And this just helps us to use this empty to control the animation in the high frequency details in those arcs. So if you just select this empty and rotate it around, you'll see how it causes this animation inside the um, our mesh. I'll then add a second displace modifier and repeat the process uh, as the first one. But the difference here is the second one will have a larger texture. And then in the modifier, I'll set the second empty that we created to control this larger texture. And if you now move around and rotate around the larger empty, you'll see how it gives this effect of a nice and fluid emotion in that texture. And using these two in combination, the first one and the second one, as the smaller one animates the high frequency detail in the electric arcs, and as the larger one animates, gives it this nice and slow fluid emotion, you get this 
really, really nice look in the final effect when the two are put together like this. And as I was making this, I realized it actually looks better if you begin with the larger displacement followed by the higher frequency detail, as you can see here. There's a lot less distortion in uh, the displacement of the high frequencies when they come last. So there's only one last thing left to do before we begin um, the animation. And if you look at the animation in the intro, you'll see how the electric arcs are jumping into all these random shapes. And that's what we're going to set up next. And we're going to do this using shape keys. The idea is to create a number of different shapes inside edit mode of this mesh and then save them inside different uh, shape keys. And we can then animate the values of each shape key to transition between the different shapes. The idea is to try and make each of the shape key to be different from the other. You don't want, when the, uh, when the electricity is doing its thing, you don't want to notice repeating patterns. So once you have that set up, you can see how if you play around the value of each shape key, uh, the mesh changes from one shape to another. And the only thing left to do now is to animate. So a really cool thing about this is we're going to animate this whole effect procedurally. So I'll start with the empties that we're using to displace uh, the electric arcs. So I'll select the smaller empty, which we're using to control the high frequency detail. And I'll set a keyframe in its uh, Z rotation. And then I'll come to the end panel in the graph editor and add a generator, which uses a math function to plot a graph. And you can use this now to tweak the animation to whichever speed that you uh, works for you. But generally, you want the empty controlling the high frequency detail to be moving really fast and the other one controlling the fluidy slow motion to be moving uh, slowly. And once you've set up your animation, uh, I mean, once you've set up the generator with the settings that you want, you can just, instead of repeating the whole process for the next um, object, you can just hit this button and that just copies the modifier and then select the other empty, set a keyframe in the Z rotation and then just paste that modifier. And then from there, you can just easily tweak and make the animation for the second empty a bit slower. So to create that change in shape, if you look at the intro, the shape isn't happening um, gradually. It's instant and random. So to do that, I'll select the our electric arcs and set a keyframe in the value of key one, and then add a noise modifier. And this just generates a random noise, as you can see here, if you increase the strength. And then because the value of the key is between zero and one. I'm then going to add a limits modifier and check the minimum and maximum Y and set the minimum to zero and maximum to one. So if you zoom in, that just clips our animation. It clips the curves that were generated by the noise modifier between zero and one. So if the shape is changing too fast for your liking, you can play with the scale of the noise modifier and that will make the change to be a lot slower or faster depending on what you want. And then now that we have this set up, we don't have to go and start creating manually again all these um, this setup. You can just copy the modifiers and then set a keyframe for key two, paste those modifiers, select the curve and then paste those modifiers. And then you can use the phase to just randomize um, the curves for that value. And then you can do the same for key three, set a keyframe, select that curve and then paste the modifiers and then use the phase again to randomize. If you now play your animation, you'll see how the arcs are jumping between uh, the three shapes. And just as we've done with the keys, we can also do the same to the rotation of the object itself. 
And between the changing of the three shapes and also if we randomize the rotation, it will be very difficult to notice a repeating pattern. So I'll just copy those modifiers, set a keyframe in the X rotation of our, our electric arc, and then paste. Yeah, we, essentially, we're just doing exactly the same. But this time, I'll set the clipping to a very high value for, for the rotation. So I'll just raise the clipping to about 350 or something like that. And then I'll also increase the phase so that it's not um, rotating so, so, so quickly. And then I'll do the same for all the other axes, the Y axis and the Z axis while also changing around um, the phase. So you'll see between the changing of the three different uh, shape keys that we made and also the changing of the three rotations of um, the object, it will be very difficult to notice um, repeating shapes in your electric arcs, which is really, really nice. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. You can combine this technique with um, other techniques uh, that I've seen other creators make. You can check out uh, Peter Frank's uh, lightning tutorial where he uses the hook modifier and gets the bolts to interact with surfaces and objects in your scene, which is really cool. So check that tutorial out and see what you can do. Remember, if you make something from this video, tag me, I'd like to see them so that I can also share it. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.